topic one is reactivity trends in the periodic table. You should be able to explain how group one elements reactivity increases as you go down the group because the outer shell of electrons becomes further away from the positive nucleus, so less attraction, so that's easier to lose. Explain how group seven element reactivity decreases as you go down the group. The outer shell electrons are become also further away from the nucleus, so they are less attracted to the nucleus, and so it becomes harder to gain an electron. Remember that noble gases, which are group zero elements, there they have they are unreactive because they have complete outer shell of electrons, so they are stable and they do not tend to gain, lose, or share electrons. Given a list of reactions between uh, group one and group seven elements, you should be able to judge which reaction is more violent, the one which has more, more reactive um, group one element or more reactive group seven elements will be more violent. Topic two is group one elements, alkali metals. The physical properties of alkali metal, like they are solids with low temp melting point and they have low density. Their chemical properties, where they react with water to give hydroxides and hydrogen, react with oxygen to give oxides and react with halogens to give metal halides. Remember that all of these reactions are redox reactions and you should be able to write the ionic equation. The, remember that the electronic configuration of any element determine its position in the periodic table. So the outer shell electrons, the number of outer shell electrons will determine the group and the number of electron shells will determine the period. Topic three is group seven elements or halogens. The physical properties of uh, halogens, uh, fluorine and chlorine are gases, bromine is liquid and iodine is a solid. Their chemical properties, the displacement reaction, the more reactive halogen will displace the less reactive one from its salt with the, you should know the expected color change when you do this reaction. Remember that displacement reactions are also redox reaction. So the more reactive halogen will be reduced in this uh, reaction because it gains electrons to give halide, while the less reactive one, uh, which, which is in the form of halide at the beginning of the reaction, will be oxidized because it lost electrons to give halogens. Topic four is the rate of reactions graph and the factor affecting reaction rate. You should be able to calculate the rate of the reaction from the graph. They will ask you to draw the tangent at certain point, and then you can calculate the gradient to calculate the rate of the reaction. Remember the different factors affecting the rate of the reaction with explanation in terms of collision. So increased temperature increases the rate because of the more frequent collisions and also because more collisions are effective because of the high energy. Concentration in case of a solution also increases the uh, frequency of collisions. Pressure in case of gases is the same like concentration. And an increase in the surface area to volume ratio will also uh, increase the frequency of a collision. And finally, the use of a catalyst, the use of a catalyst, a catalyst provide an alternative pathway for their action with a lowered activation energy. You should be able to draw the activation, uh, show the uh, lowered activation energy when a catalyst is used. You should know that a catalyst is a substance that speeds up the reaction without being used in that reaction. And you should know some examples from your chemistry knowledge of um, catalyst. Topic five is the energy level uh, diagrams and calculation of the enthalpy using the bond energies. So you should be able to differentiate between exothermic reaction and endothermic reaction. Remember that exothermic reaction reactants er energy are lower than the product's energy, <clears throat> sorry, are higher uh, the reactant energies are higher than the product energy, and this is the activation energy, which is the difference between the energy of the reactants and the top point of your graph. And then the energy released or the overall energy change is a difference between the energy of the reactants and the product. Remember for exothermic reaction, the reaction releases energy in the form of heat, and remember that the increase there will be an increase in the temperature. The overall energy change will be negative value in case of exothermic reaction and the opposite for endothermic reaction. So reactants energies are less than the products and the reaction takes energy in. So there is a decrease in temperature and the overall energy change will be positive value. So reactants energy here on the energy profile is lower than the products. 
you should be able to calculate the enthalpy or the overall energy change, which is the energy gained to break the bonds and reactants minus the energy lost to uh, make the bonds in the product. They will provide you with a table with the bond, different bond energy and ask you to calculate the overall energy change. Remember that at the end, if it's a negative value, this is an exothermic reaction. If it's a positive value, then it's an endothermic reaction. Topic six is fuel and crude oil. So remember that crude oil are a mixture of hydrocarbon. They are finite resources and they can be used as fuel and as feed stock. Uh, remember the separation of the different component or the different fraction of crude oil using the fractional distillation and that fractional uh, different fractions have different boiling points viscosity and flammability so the increase in the size of the uh, hydrocarbons leads to an increase in the boiling points and viscosity and it decreases the flammability remember that cracking is the um, breaking down of the long chain hydrocarbon to form shorter chain hydrocarbon. Some of these are alkenes and others are alkenes. They are more useful and you should be able to complete an equation for cracking. You should know the test for the double bond, which is the alkene, because one of the product of cracking is alkene. This is the bromine water test and remember the change in the color in case of the positive test from orange into colorless. Hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbons contain carbon and hydrogen only. And if they ask you, don't forget to put the word only. Alkenes are saturated hydrocarbons because they don't have any double bond, where alkenes have this double bond, which is the functional group. And this is why they are unsaturated. Remember the addition reaction of bromine to alkene to give, uh, and this is the test for uh, bromine water. Uh, so you should be able to draw the product of the addition where the bromine is added to the double bond. Remember the homology series. This is a very common question in the exam when they ask you about homology series. Homology series, they are a group of uh, compounds, which all, they all have the same uh, general formula and they have gradual variation in their physical properties but they because they have the same functional group so they have the same chemical properties and they differ by ch2 from the neighboring members remember that alkanes alkenes alcohols and carboxylic acid are all different homology series combustion and problem associated with products from burning from combustion. So you should be able to differentiate between complete and incomplete combustion and write a balanced equation for both. Remember that complete combustion in presence of enough uh, oxygen or excess oxygen and the products are only carbon dioxide and water, but incomplete combustion in the absence of enough oxygen and the product will be carbon monoxide and uh, in addition to carbon dioxide water and also it could be soot or carbon particulate. Remember the different gases that are emitted by burning fuel and their associated impact. So carbon dioxide goes, causes global warming and uh, carbon monoxide is a toxic gas that causes suffocation. Sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide, these are the cause acid rain and respiratory problem. And then soot or carbon particulate, they cause global dimming and respiratory problem. Alcohols, carboxylic and carboxylic acids. So you should be able to name the first four members of the alcohol homology uh, series. These are methanol, ethanol, propanol and one butanol. You should know how to manufacture ethanol. This is through the fermentation of sugars to give ethanol and carbon dioxide. Ethanol can be concentrated from the fermentation by fractional distillation of the fermentation solution. Ethanol is oxidized to give ethanoic acid, which is the carboxylic acid of ethanol, and you can also um, deduce the uh, oxidized product of any of the uh, first four members of the alcohols. The structure formula of carboxylic acid and its function group, this is the functional group of the carboxylic acid, which is the carbon with a double bond oxygen, and then this OH. You should know all the acid properties of carboxylic acid. Um, carboxylic acids are typical acids and they have typical acid properties. Polymers. So you should be able to draw the addition polymer from alkene and you should be able to identify the repeating unit for any polymer. You should be able to name the small molecule product of condensation polymer, which is water. And you should know that naturally occurring polymers are starch with their beating unit of starch are sugars and then DNA, which are nucleoside, and then finally proteins, which are amino acid. Remember that you should be able as well to draw the condensa condensation polymerization product, the structure of the polymer or deduce the uh, structure of the monomers used. 
gases in the atmosphere, the Earth's early atmosphere and how it changed. Remember that nitrogen increased due to volcanic activity, water vapor condensed to make oceans, carbon dioxide decreased first because it dissolved in water and then formed sedimentary rocks and then later via photosensors and oxygen increased by the photosensors. Remember the greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and methane and the human activities that increased these gases, which is the use of fuel and farming and also the effect of greenhouse gases on the average earth at temperature. Qualitative analysis. So you should know and be able to describe the chemical test for different gases, hydrogen, oxygen, chlorine, carbon dioxide and ammonia, the flame test for metals, the sodium hydroxide test for cations. This is for calcium, magnesium, aluminium, iron 2 plus, iron 3 plus and copper 2 plus. And the test for halide, which is the silver nitrate test and test for sulfate, which is the barium chloride test and test for carbonate. And you should be able to identify the cation or the anion of any unknown salt using the results of the test provided from the, the set of the above tests. So um, you should also be able to plan and experiment to identify the different anions or and cations in a provided compound. This is um, a certain question in your exam. So make sure that you master all of these chemical tests. Nanoparticles, also one of the very common questions in the exam. You should know that surface area to volume, what is surface area to volume ratio, and you should be able to calculate the ratio of a given data. You should know the advantages and uses of nanoparticle because this is a very common question in your exam and the controversy about the use of nanoparticle because, for example, they have un unknown long term effects and there is not enough testing for the use of nanoparticles. And finally, math skill, there will be quite few questions on math. You should be able to identify the molecular formula of a compound based on data provided. Remember to calculate the number of moles of each element in the compound by calculating mass over the relative atomic mass for each element in a compound. Then you can calculate the ratio between the different elements in the compound to identify the molecular formula of that particular compound. Calculate the concentration in gram per decimeter cubed. Remember to change the volume provi provided from centimeter cubed to decimeter 